Game changer is something that we hear all the time, but for once, when it comes to virtual reality and first person shooters, it's actually true. From aiming your gun and firing it, reloading, using cover, or even just switching weapons. The difference between non-VR traditional games or a VR game is night and day in the way you play and interact with the world. Let's start with the basics and work our way up. And at the core of any first person shooter, you've got a gun, you aim and shoot. With the traditional non-VR game, you aim your gun with either a mouse or a thumbstick on a gamepad. You move the on-screen reticle over your target and you press a button. You can usually press another button, which lets you aim down the sights for increased accuracy. With virtual reality, you've actually got motion controllers in each hand, and these will track your movements with millimetre precision. The controllers are designed to feel like you're holding the grip of a gun, with your finger naturally sitting over a trigger button. If we just look at pistols or any one-handed weapon, you're actually mimicking the action you would do in real life. In a non-VR game, you have three degrees of movement. You can move your view up, down, left and right, and the gun is fixed to where you're looking. With VR, you've got full six degrees of freedom, so not only up, down, left and right, but you've got forwards, backwards, and you also have full rotation of the wrist. You are literally occupying a 3D space. Your head and hands are also totally independent of each other, so you can look around freely. You can put someone into VR who has never played a video game before and they'll be looking around and shooting instantly. Try and get in a non-gamer to play a traditional game and you can watch them struggle. Aim at a pistol, you hold out the gun in front of you and then you pull the trigger to fire. If you want to be more accurate, you need to pull the gun up and line up the sights. You can fire one-handed, although some games have the gun kick back making it less accurate. You can bring your second hand over to grab the virtual pistol to increase accuracy. Even if the game doesn't have kickback built in, using your second hand to steady your aim can help, as even the slightest bit of movement can make the difference between a headshot and totally missing your target. Having a free hand can also be used for holding a second pistol, which lets you aim in two directions at once. You can hold a knife for a quick stab if someone gets up close and personal. What up, son? Oh. Or maybe a touch to try and help light up dark areas. Two-handed guns, like assault rifles, play exactly the same on a non-VR game. You aim and you shoot. In VR, you need to use a second hand to hold the front of the gun. You can try using one hand, but most games have the gun kick wildly, making them pretty useless. Using two hands is essential if you want to be accurate. You can fire from the hip, or pull the gun up to aim down the sights for even more accuracy. Because the gun is virtual and doesn't actually exist in the real world, you do have more movement than you would in real life. So some people actually use a gun stock which let you slot the controllers in connecting them together. This makes it easier when you pull the rifle up to aim and also increases immersion. Once you've emptied the magazine, you need to reload. In a non-VR game, you simply press a button and watch an animation. In virtual reality, you are the animation. If you want to reload a pistol, then you need to press a button to eject the magazine. Insert a new one, and then rack a slide. If you don't empty the gun so a bullet is still in the chamber, you don't have to rack it. You can even use that spare hand to hold a new magazine, ready to do a hot swap. Revolvers require you to pop out the cylinder, hold the gun up vertically to remove the empty shells, and then put in new bullets and flick the cylinder back. A pump action shotgun requires loading each shell and pumping between each shots.
You've got a lot of different guns, which all reload differently. So learning how to handle each weapon is important if you want to be effective in a multiplayer shooter. If you're into guns, then there's no better VR game than hot dogs, hot shoes and hand grenades. This is a sandbox gun simulator with over 250 guns, which are modelled with extreme accuracy and is essential for any gun nut. So what about swapping weapons? In a traditional non-VR game, you press a button to switch or pick one from the ground by looking at it and pressing a button. In virtual reality, most games have holster points on your in-game body which let you place a limited amount of weapons. You can sometimes holster them on your back. If you want to pick up an enemy's weapon, you simply reach down and grab it. Some games also use a telekinesis type system to save you bending over if you want to play seated. Lastly, let's talk about movement and using cover. In a non-VR game, you can usually duck or go prone by pressing or holding a button. Some VR games do have a duck button if you're feeling lazy or you're for playing seated, but the benefit of having your movements tracked one to one is that you can actually duck behind cover and rather than being blind to the enemy or just fully exposed, you can actually peek. This means you can gradually look over cover or around the corner. You can even blind fire. Non-VR games have become more and more complicated when it comes to movement, with soldiers running around like hyperactive teenagers on crack. They're jumping around all over the battlefield, jumping through windows and vaulting over walls every minute. VR games have taken a step back in this regard. Movement is more grounded, with many games not even having a jump button, although we are seeing this more and more with games like Boneworks opening up movement, although it is only recommended for people who have strong VR legs. One game that released last year which has got some of my favourite movement is Stormland. You play as a robot that can climb any surface, you can literally fling yourself up to the top of a rock formation, jump off and hold your hands in front of you like Superman. You literally fly around the environment and you can even glide over clouds and boost yourself up into the air. I really hope we see more VR games that give you this sort of freedom you get like in this game. Developers are still figuring out movement 
but even in the most basic form, being in the game and interacting with the world in such a natural way really is a literal game changer. And that's it. This is part of a series of videos I'm making where I go into different genres on how virtual reality changes them. If this is something that you're interested in, you might want to check out some of my other videos, or you could always subscribe so you know when I upload a new one.